3D printed DIY car parts. Can it be done? Yes, yes it can. I've been kind of out of the 3D printing loop for a while because frankly I had a client about five years ago that was a 3D printing company and uh, every time we went to go shoot their uh, printers working they would always crap out halfway through, bad things would happen, it would take forever. It kind of turned me off from the whole idea. Well, this Christmas season, um, I found some great prices on some 3D printers, both uh, an FDM printer, uh, specifically the Creality Ender 3. I paid like $155 for it. It was ridiculously cheap. And an SLA printer, you know, one of those resin type deals. Speaking of which, let me go get that resin print right now. All right, so the SLA printer was the first one that I took out of the box. Uh, I give you the thinker. The thinker. The thunker. Anyway, so that was the first one I played with simply because, you know, everybody's familiar with FDM printing, the filament type stuff, but the SLA stuff is still relatively new. So that was the first one I took out of the box. Uh, <laughs> It's pretty cool, I have to say. Uh, to be able to print stuff like this, this is just a low poly of the very famous sculpture. Um, those of you who are not Philistines will recognize it right away. I uh, used a translucent green resin and uh, came out fantastic. Well, this kind of printing has its advantages and disadvantages. Advantages are it's very high resolution. There's almost no layer lines like there is in FDM printing. Uh, the disadvantages are it's kind of a pain in the butt to work with. You have to wash it, you have to clean it. Uh, uh, it emits a smell when it's printing, it's kind of slow, and the print size is actually kind of small. Uh, at least for the whopping 160 bucks I spent on my, uh, what is it, a Vox Lab, I believe. Um, the smaller Vox Lab. Um, but uh, anyway, so, uh, but that was the first one I pulled out, and uh, you know, it was really cool. And in fact, I started designing my own prints. I printed uh, follow focus gear. It worked out kind of okay. I still have to redo it, to be honest with you. But again, it was slow and time consuming. Well, then something happened. And specifically, the Ender was just sitting in a box, by the way. The, the FDM printer has been sitting in a box for about a month and a half now. Uh, finally, I decided to pull it out. And then, uh, unfortunately, uh, yesterday, we uh, had to put Lucy, um, our cat, to sleep. Uh, she was very sick. Um, and it was kind of sad, and I found myself wide awake at 5 o'clock this morning as a result. And I'm like, well, because it's doing this outside, it's too cold for me to go outside and, uh, you know, into the garage anyway. I got to heat it up and everything. Plus, it's like 5 in the morning. I don't really feel like, you know, doing all that kind of stuff, but I really can't sleep, so what am I going to do? So I thought to myself, I was like, you know what? Let's try to make some parts on the Ender. So I had already assembled it. I already done a test print with it. I ran out of uh, the, the test PLA. Um, and, uh, you know, but it's been kind of sitting there off to the side for a couple weeks now. Like, well, maybe now's a good time to design some parts. I don't feel like going out in the garage too cold and practical, but the stuff that I need to make is stuff that's fairly easy for me to model. You know, again, I'm not big into the whole software thing, you, as you learned from a uh, previous video where we programmed... Uh, uh, Arduino Nano, um, but that is kind of my weak link. Plus, there is a YouTube channel, which you guys are probably aware of, called Stuff Made Here. Uh, that guy, like, exploded onto the scene in March of 2020, and uh, his YouTube views have just exploded simply because the guy is a genius. I mean, he, is, he makes me feel dumb. Um, and uh, it's because he's a software engineer. And software engineers are the wizards of our time. They're the ones who can make the machines dance. So as I mentioned, turned off from 3D printing a while ago and then kind of turned back onto it. And I figured, well, let's give it a shot. Um, there's another guy that recently just did some tests about what plastics would survive in a car in an automotive environment. And PLA, which is the most common filament, which is what this, 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 and this are printed from, doesn't really do particularly well. It tends to go a little bit limp around 140 degrees Fahrenheit or roughly, you know, somewhere in the 50, 60 degrees Celsius range. So inside of a car, for example, like a daily driver that's parked outside all day in the summer with the windows up, you know, it could get really hot and this, this would be no good. However, the LTD is a different beast entirely. It's not a commuter car, so it does not have to sit through that. So I figured, well, you know what? 
at the very least, let's make the models. Five o'clock in the morning, cold outside, cold in the garage. Let's go ahead and make the models. And, uh, you know, we can always print them out as some other medium. So basically, these are the two that I made this morning and printed. These, honestly, I did uh, about four or five days ago. Um, these, so these were the first pieces that I designed. And then these were this morning. So this is actually in the center console. This was, uh, you know, control switch. This is a piece of aluminum plate, what I've been using here. It's, you know, sandblasted, kind of down and dirty. There was a, a thermometer that was attached here. You can see the remnants of the blue tech. But I have had uh, to gaffer tape the displays for the electric vortex to the dash, uh, which you saw in the bottom corner. And kind of, you know, it's a nice car. I, I don't like it being that kind of rigged up. And this was fairly easy to do. So my first attempt, this guy's actually upside down. My first attempt was this. And it turned out pretty good. Uh, the thing that's really kind of weird is it tapers in thickness from here to here. And I did all kinds of settings and everything else and try to get it to lessen that. This is my final attempt. There's still a difference in thickness, but whatever. It is a plastic deposition print. Um, but this turned out pretty well. And, you know, the sizing was a little bit off. Had to do some tweaking. So then this was take two. And I figured, well, you know, I had this... Uh, cigarette lighter adapter and I really don't have a cigarette plug in there should I need one. Uh, so I might as well include that. And that's one of the great things about this. You can make as many variants as you want. You can move things around when you make the variants. But once you have the basic geometry in place, it's like super easy to do. So I added this hole. As you can tell, the finish is kind of crappy. This one has, this one is solid. Uh, I tried to make it higher resolution. It just didn't work out terribly well. And the hole sizes were still off. So this was the last one. Now I did find out that I actually kind of like this pattern. And this is sort of a low res pattern, but I'm using this black silk filament, even though it looks gray, which happens to match the interior of the car perfectly, which kind of sucks because again, you know, this is not going to be a permanent solution most likely, but it will do for the time being. So this is where I ended up. Uh, this I actually sanded and waxed and polished and did all kinds of happy stuff. But what I've not done is put the pieces parts in it yet. So since we no longer need to see this or this, let's make ourselves a little bit of room. Here, let's put this guy here in the corner. There. You can watch. So, he likes to watch. No, that's getting weird. All right, so let's put these pieces parts in. So, again, the piece that I already had in there, in the aluminum, was this one. So, this is a basic, straightforward hole. The interesting thing about the hole is, I don't know if you can make it out, but it's made out of a series of tangential lines. And, uh, or I believe they're called cords in math, but I could be wrong, didn't do that great in math. That's why stuff made here. That guy is a wizard to my court jester, I guess. Uh, anyway, so this is the first piece. Let's, we, we, this is a piece that we've already had in there. There's already the wiring in place for it. And I was like, all right, well, let's just, you know, include this. These little plastic nuts are kind of a pain in the butt to get on straight. So when I had this in, I had ordered... Now, this is designed for a switch panel and I like a Toyota or something, I think. Uh, this, this, this piece here, which is actually related to what I'm tightening here. And we will see that shortly. So let me make sure this is in the right way around. Nice and tightened up. And there you have it. Good enough. This obviously, this is just a USB thing. It rotates. So next thing up, this is designed to fit into like the switch panel of a Toyota Tacoma. I have a voltmeter in the dashboard, but it's in a weird spot. It tends to always fall down and it's kind of hard to see. And plus, this comes with two more USB ports. You can never have too many USB ports these days. And there's a little voltmeter display right here, right in the middle, uh, which is a perfect spot for it. Plus it has these cool little plastic contraceptives just in case anything bad goes wrong. Now, I have not tried to put stuff in here, so if I crack this panel, well, we're gonna find out together. So let's see here, let me see if we can squeeze that in. Oh, look at that, popped right in, perfect. All right, so we, we're we doing pretty well so far. So the next thing that you saw all the time when we're looking at the data videos uh, was this big display. This is the, the current display. And uh, this was, like I said, just gaff to the side. There's still some remnants of gaffer's tape here. I'm not gonna worry about that a whole lot. Uh, that should just pop in here. Let's see if it does. I'm just waiting for this to crack on camera and then this whole video will be all shizzed. Let's see. 
Well, it made a loud snap, but it is a perfect fit. So, so we're doing well so far. All right, so this is the thermometer and voltmeter. Got to make sure we put these things in the right side up. Same deal. This should just pop in. Let's see if she does. Oh, easy, easy peasy. Look at that. Thing of beauty so far. So all that's left, and I know these fit, because they fit in the other variants that I made. These are rocker switches, so these will simply control things like... Uh, um, I'm not sure what I'm going to have them control exactly yet. There, there's a couple of toggle switches in the dashboard that are unlabeled right now, so it might take over from that. Uh, one of them is the blower for the what's left of the HVAC controls in the car. And the other one is for is a bypass for the electric water pump and the cooling fan on the radiator. Uh, but here, uh, I probably will... Well, I don't know. I, I'm not going to commit to anything here because uh, I don't want you to hold it against me. So, as we see, it is entirely possible to make interior gauge panels, at least, for the inside of your car. And now the cool thing is, you have two options. So, if your car does get exposed to high temps, particularly internally, um, then this PLA is not going to work for you. So, there are other options. There's PETG, which is a relatively new kind of filament and uh, that will withstand the temperatures that you'd find inside of a car in pretty much everywhere except for say Arizona in the desert in the summer or Death Valley or someplace like that and uh, it's it's worth noting that most of the interior of most cars are, is made out of ABS and that's another plastic you can print with apparently although I have zero experience with it um, and, uh, you know, PT, PETG, I think, is probably the best bet. Now, if you want extreme high temperature, that's when you go to this. So there's a guy in Hungary who actually tested this. I mentioned him earlier. And, uh, you know, these things were letting go. The PETG was good to 75 degrees Celsius. The uh, PLA, which is what this is, was good to 58 degrees Celsius. But he stopped his test at 200 degrees Celsius, and this stuff didn't even get soft. So you can always print it out of this. Now, it doesn't have to be clear like this. It can be pretty much any color. So most likely, I will use PETG for this because my SLA printer is not big enough to print this in one piece. Uh, but it would be big enough to print these two pieces. So we do have interior stuff, but now let's get to actual car parts, or at least as far as uh, car parts go. In this case, we're talking about parts for... We'll just leave this right here in the frame. Uh, parts for the electric turbo, electric supercharger. So one of the things I've had an issue with was things were just kind of flopping around loose and willy-nilly. And with the new control unit being this, I wanted it to sit nicely. Um, so this has a couple of uh, screw holes here designed for three millimeter screws. That'll go right into the wooden box, which when it's upholstered and everything else will be fine. But it has to fit perfectly. Now, you're wondering to yourself, you saw that hole in the middle. Alex, why'd you put a hole there? Well, this is why. Do you know how hard this thing would be to take out without a hole right there to push it through? So, I got a little clever there. This is actually the second attempt, the first attempt. I paused the print, and I found out that if you pause the print, uh, at least in this case, because this, this one only has a 20% infill, it's actually a fairly weak part. But how strong does it have to be to hold this? Not strong at all. Uh, it was actually too weak, and it split. So... I also had to resize it anyway to make it the perfect size to fit. So anyway, so that is our control unit case, and it will literally just sit in there. There's room for the wires to come in and out. If you want to uh, hold it in place, you can friction fit a piece of foam on top or whatever. I probably won't even need to do that where it's going to be. I think this will be just fine. Um, and then the other thing is, you remember the batteries that we use to power the whole mess, these little uh, LiPos? Well, I needed some way to hold them against the side of the housing. So... Simply like that. I mean, how cool is that? Nice and simple. And these two parts I actually could do on my SLA printer, so heat would not be an issue if I feel the need to go that route. Uh, but most likely it would be PT PETG if I do that at all. Uh, these will probably, like I said, never overheat. There's, they're not under any kind of significant mechanical stress. They're, they're just fine. So uh, the cool thing about this is, you know, I, like I could have machined this out of a hunk of plastic, gone out there, you know, froze my butt off and spent hours and all that. 
These two parts, I have almost no experience. I use Tinkercad, which I think is designed for like kids and students and stuff, but it's a Fusion 360 online product. To design this and this combined took me less than an hour and I really don't know what I'm doing yet. Uh, to print them is a different story. This is about a two hour print. This is about a four hour print. But, you know, you just send it to print, walk away, do other things. I actually got a chance to get a workout in today. That was awesome. Uh, would not have happened if I was standing at the mill. Uh, but you can do features like these countersunk screws. And again, I don't even know what I'm doing yet. And I could pump these things out real quick. See? Just like that. I mean, that's pretty freaking sweet. As far as I'm concerned, I'm really happy with this. So, can you print... 3D print car parts. Yes, you can. And I know what you guys are thinking. You expect it. Well, how about a crankshaft? Well, that may be possible in the future too, particularly with this uh, FDM te uh, technology, because what they can do is you can embed particles into the filament itself. And uh, I think just today or yesterday, uh, at least as of the date of this recording, Donut Media uh, posted a video about 3D printing pistons. Now this is for the DIY, this is for the tinker, this is for you and me, there's a reason why you're watching my channel, right? Uh, we're not OEMs, uh, we're not trying to make parts in mass and you know, it just has to work in this case until we get everything sussed out, which is very, very, we're very close to that. Uh, but you can print car parts. I mean, look, I barely know what I'm doing and I've already got these three guys functional. In fact, I'm gonna go put this in and I'll show it to you. Uh, but this is fantastic. This is such a huge time saver. I cannot begin to express how excited I am about this. And also again, how dumb I feel thanks to stuff made here. But you know, that guy, <laughs> <laughs> Again, software, he's the software designer, software engineers. Uh, they're the wizards of our day. It kind of reminded me of the meek shall inherit the earth, right? I mean, but, you know, he's not real meek, but he's he's a clever dude. He makes the Mythbusters guys look kind of dumb. Uh, so there you have it, folks. Yes, you can indeed print 3D print uh, car parts at home. You can even, you know, if you put some thought into it. <laughs> Just kidding. Anyway, so there you go first 3D printed car parts and I expect to do this a lot more and the great thing is they're so easy to modify. I can move stuff around on this panel and just redo it and you know it, it doesn't matter like if I want to get rid of this and put more toggle switches or rocker switches here and you know then label them I can do that. Uh, you know it's a relatively easy print. All I got to do is throw down 20 bucks for a roll of uh, PETG and it will look just like this but be you know temperature resistant to any reasonable temperature that that car will ever see. So there you have it. 3D printed DIY car parts. If I can do it, you can do it. Subscribe and thanks for watching.